Next thing we're going to talk about is the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is another way to solve quadratic equations. So the solutions of quadratic equations, which would be right, its roots, its x-intercepts, are given by the formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. It's important to note that this is something you will have to memorize and that b squared minus 4ac, we call this the discriminant, and it has some interesting properties we're going to talk about in just a minute. So why don't we go ahead and solve uh, the following quadratic equations using the quadratic form. The first thing you need to note is that equations must be in standard form, right? This is our standard form before we can use the quadratic equation. Um, when in doubt, put a quadratic in standard form would be my suggestion. I like to go ahead and label what everything is. So A is 1, B is negative 5, and C is negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm just going to substitute into this equation our values of a, b, and c. So I have x equals negative, negative 5, plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared, minus 4 times 6 times negative 4, a, c, all over 2a. This is going to simplify to 25 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 8 times 6, Nope, 4 times 6 times 4. This becomes a positive 96, all over 2a, which was 6, so all over 12. 25 plus uh, 96 is going to be 121, so I've got 25 plus or minus the square root of 121 over 12. Now this is really exciting because the square root of 121 is a really nice number, right? It's 11, so I have 25 plus or minus 11 over 12. Now I can go ahead and solve for my two values of x. I have x equals 25 plus 11 over 12, or x equals 25 minus 11 over 12. 25 plus 11 becomes 36, divided by 12 is 3. 25 minus 11 is 14, divided by 12, we can factor out a power of 2, that becomes 7 sixths. So my solutions are x is 3 and x is 7, 6. I put 7, 6 in the front because we typically write to write them from smallest to largest. All right, why don't I go ahead and give us some room and I will solve our second example. So I have 4x equals 8x minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and move everything to the left. So my a is positive minus 8x plus 1, so I have 4x squared minus 8x plus 1 equals 0. So my a is 4, my b is negative 8, and my c is 1. I have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So x is 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 16 all over 8. So that is x equals 8 plus or minus the square root of 48 over 8. Now 4, the 8 factors into, um, I've got, um, 4 times 12, and then I've got 2 times 2, and I've got 4 times 3, and 2 times 2. So it is 2 to the 4th times 3. So we can simplify the square root of 48 by pulling out the squares. So the square root of 48 is going to factor into 4 square root of 3. If you need to know how we did that, please go watch the Chapter R review videos. So now I have x equals 8 plus or minus... 4 square root of 3 over 8. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this fraction because each of these have a power of 4 in them. I'm going to have 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. So my solution set is going to be um, uh, my x values are going to be 1 plus the square root of 3 divided by 2 or 1 minus
minus the square root of 3 divided by 2. So this is our solution set using the quadratic formula. The discriminant of a quadratic equation, what I mentioned is under the square root, can be used to determine both the type and number of solutions that a quadratic equation is going to have. So for example, if my discriminant is positive and is a perfect square, I'm going to have two rational solutions. If my discriminant is positive and not a perfect square, I'm going to have two irrational solutions. If my discriminant is zero, I'm only going to have one real solution. This is a double root. This would mean my parabola's vertex is right on my x-axis, wherever it decides to be. And if it's negative, um, that means I have two complex solutions. And what's really cool is that the solutions are conjugates of each other. And we're going to talk about that more in section 1.4. So let's go ahead and find the number and type of solutions uh, that these two are going to have. So I'm just going to find b squared minus 4ac. That would be negative 1 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 15. So I'm going to have 1 plus 4 times 6 times 15. It's 360. So I have 361 is my discriminant. These two negatives became a positive. So this is definitely not a perfect square, but it is positive. So I'm going to have two irrational solutions. Okay, let's go ahead and clear the board and change color at the, while we're at it. So next I have 3x squared minus 4x equals 5. Remember, I need to write this in um, standard notation first. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, and it will be equal to 0. So now I have a, I got to find b squared minus 4ac. So b here is negative 4 minus 4 times a times c. So I'm going to have 16 plus 60 which is 76. That's again not a perfect square, so I'm going to have two irrational solutions.